My brothers and sisters in Christ, one of the compelling arguments that's been made throughout time towards atheists or skeptics of the veracity of the, the scriptural accounts in the Gospels, one of the compelling arguments against has been the way in which the evangelists and the apostles portray themselves in the accounting. Said differently, if you were to write a story of your own life or your encounter, you would probably be inclined, if not to, to lie, at least from your own, your own bias, you would probably soften your own edges, so to speak. But what we find in the Gospels is that the apostles and evangelists don't hold anything back in, in pointing to how stupid and unfaithful they were at times in response to Jesus and the Gospel. In fact, they find that the, their own story of coming to, to understand is itself a powerful witness. And that is the case with St. Thomas that we, we hear about in today's gospel. It's his feast day today. And the feast of St. Thomas, of course, you know what gospel is going to be read on his day, the Doubting Thomas story. And so this is a gospel we always hear uh, early on in Easter season that has a, a lot of important context in the, the resurrection. But for today's sake, for a daily mass kind of homily reflection, Instead, just want to point to Thomas, and, and again, if, if Thomas were telling his own story and making it up, I doubt he would paint it in such a way to make himself forever labeled Doubting Thomas. But that is the story that is passed on. Of course, he goes on to great faithfulness as an apostle after the resurrection. But what's interesting in this account is... We, we know the, the twofold nature of this appearance in the upper room. In the first appearance, Jesus sees them all, and Thomas is not there. And this shouldn't be overlooked. Why is Thomas not there? Why is Thomas not with his brothers? Has he fled? Is he not gathered with them in prayer? We don't know. It, it's left for us to guess. But Thomas misses out on this very important moment because he is not present. And then when he's told about it, he refuses to believe. And it says, no way, unless I see the, the marks of the nails, unless I put my hand in the side, I will not believe. And so when Jesus appears again, as we hear, we get exactly that. Thomas has the chance to do these things and is brought to belief. But what's interesting is the one who is the doubting one, the one who is absent before, now responds my Lord and my God, which is the most powerful expression of faith given in the Gospels. Because this, we, we see different way, the apostles, even that, that Peter refers to Jesus at times, but to put together my Lord and my God, this was an expression. These two words using together only went with God the Father in the Old Testament. So even as the disciples are coming to this belief, they certainly call him Lord and beginning to see his God, but now my Lord and my God. So now Thomas has run the gamut from being the absent one, the doubting one, to now the most powerful profession of faith recorded thus far. This, my brothers and sisters, is a reminder to us of the power of reconciliation and grace. And of course, that's a major theme of this passage in the gospel as Jesus gives the gift of the Holy Spirit is to give this ministry of reconciliation. But for us, regardless of where I am today or where I've been in the past, regardless of how I've sinned, how I've been a lousy disciple, how I've strayed, how I've betrayed the Lord, whatever it may be, His grace is sufficient for me. Today, I have the chance as the Lord comes to me to not respond in doubt, to not respond in my absence, not in betrayal, but instead to look at the Lord and proclaim in the fullness of faith, my Lord and my God. St. Thomas is not remembered by the church as doubting Thomas, but as St. Thomas the Apostle. St. Thomas, pray for us.